Good morning, this is Deborah Matthews, Vicar of Verwood. Over the last four weeks in St Michael's Church, we have been running the Church of England campaign called Generous Giving. When we talk about generous giving, we immediately think about giving money. And to be honest, that is the focus of this campaign, because at every level of the church, we need money to enable us to keep on doing all the things that the church has been involved in over the centuries. The services of the Church of England are available to all people, whether or not they are church members. And the church was once referred to as the only institution which exists for its non-members. Well, vicars don't usually like talking about money, but it is at least once a year an important part of our role to speak about the church finances because the responsibility to balance the books falls upon all of us and the parochial church council. In one of the altar prayers that is said when the gifts are received at the altar is, Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. And this is a reminder to us all that everything we give is a gift to us from God, and we should therefore be joyful and feel privileged to be able to give in return to the mission and upkeep of the church. The tradition of tithing, which means giving 10% of our income to the church, is obviously a major help. And it is still appropriate if that 10% is not crucial to pay the bills. But I would never want anyone to struggle financially because they are giving too much. It is all about proportionality. What is right for one person will be different for someone else. I just ask that everyone gives something and that they have considered what they give, but it is between them and God. At the moment, with gas and electricity prices rising and threatening to keep on rising, we are naturally all concerned that the most vulnerable in our society may have to choose between heat and food. So asking them to give more money to the church is not appropriate. There is a balance to keep between what we can give and our personal responsibility to cover all of our existing commitments. For many of us, though, the barrier to generosity is fear of not having enough for ourselves and for our other life choices. The Bible has always encouraged us to give back to God the first fruits of what we have, not what is left when we have done everything else that we would rather do. For most of us, going out for a coffee or a drink is not a luxury, although if we do that regularly, we can see how that cost adds up. It's not something we should necessarily stop doing, but if we consider how much we give regularly to the church, it might be a useful comparison. Giving money is not the only thing that comes out of a generous heart. And it is not only giving money that is needed. The generous giving of time and skills is also vital. Everyone, apart from me, is a volunteer. And the sacrificial giving of their gifts into ministry and service enables the church to minister in this parish. This Sunday is also our Harvest Festival service. All of our contributions this year will be going to the food bank. But do we bring the best of what we have in the cupboard or the things that have been there for a while that we're not so keen on? I'm not talking about the out of date things. Hopefully nobody will bring them. But do we bring the things that we like best? Because the principle is the same as what we do with our money. Do we give of our best? or of what's left over. As Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also.
I end with a prayer written by Ignatius Loyola in the 16th century. Dear Lord, give us generous hearts in every aspect of our lives, that when we give, we may not count the cost. Help us to serve you in all things, not to seek reward, knowing only that we do your will. Amen. God bless you and have a good week.